quick mailbag today, guys. Been doing a little bit of work on the quads, so there's going to be some quad parts, but this is still the ongoing review of the X215 Pro. Uh, you saw the initial unboxing, and I've been testing the heck out of this, and I've learned a lot. So now I've moved up to trying my run cam with a 3D printed case, flexible filament uh, from SaneSmart. Did on the i3 Mega. You'll see that uh, full coverage coming up. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And we're rebuilding Red October right now with a new flight control board because the original one failed actually way too soon, the Betaflight F3. So this is my custom paint job quad that you saw last summer that I made. It's going to be a lot of fun. First up... We have some 3D printer filament. This is for the quads and some other projects. This is a Sane Smart TPU, which is a flexible filament. We're going to use this on the i3 Mega. We're going to reprint some of those uh, HD camera mounts in flexible. And I wanted red so that I could match the red October frame. It had a black mount before. This will work great. Link will be from Amazon down below. This is an eBay find. Uh, very, very strange packaging, but this is called Nitinol. It's a nickel titanium alloy. That It's just a wire like piano wire, but when you apply heat or current through it, it will form back to a shape that you have uh, made it learn. So basically you can use this for muscle wire in like robotics projects and stuff. I'm really looking forward to giving this a try for uh, maybe some really rudimentary hand movements on the robotic arm. I'm not sure, but it sure seems to make a lot more sense than servos. Next up, got a bunch of quad parts. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and pull all of these out. This is an XM Plus receiver, uh, FR Sky receiver. I just got all this from GearBest uh, because they were the cheapest supplier at the time and I wasn't in a rush. So there's another XM Plus receiver. This is an Omnibus S4 flight controller or F4 flight controller. I'll be using this on, uh, well, something you're going to see in a minute, and a little GPS unit uh, that also is going to go with that on something you're going to see shortly here. Again, another quad part. Well, not quad. This is for an aircraft. This will also go into our uh, flight control. This is a pedostatic tube, so I can measure true airspeed. I had one of these on the EPP FPV with the Cyclops Tornado. Uh, I'm not sure how people fly autonomous uh, aircraft without an airspeed measurement. You see all kinds of videos on YouTube where the plane just falls out of the sky particularly after a turn. It's usually turned into a tailwind condition at too low of air speed, and then they just stall, usually a tip stall. This will allow you to know what the airspeed is, and if you're observant, you can tell what direction the wind is coming from and what speed it is by tracking the difference between your airspeed and your ground speed via your GPS. What have we here? Oh, this is more, more flying stuff. These are just uh, 500 milliamp hour two cell LiPo batteries, just 20 C. These are for my kind of uh, middle of the road, small quadcopters, uh, kind of high performance, but quite small. And I only had one battery for it. So now I have two. Next up, some scope probes. I have learned that it's good to have spare scope probes. I did have an incident not all that long ago where I had one fall off the bench and Eric was not observant where he was putting his feet and that was the end of the probe. So now I have some spares. These are just no name brand stuff uh, right from Amazon. I actually have these linked in my store because the price is very reasonable and I've used them before and they they do work very well for the price. So nothing fancy, but they'll get the job done. Next up, some encoder knobs. Now I have a 3D printer, I can always print them, but these are quite cheap from China and they have a nice little dual color system with a pointer on it, good for potentiometers, particularly if you have a, a certain range, or uh, an encoder, and they are uh, set up for an encoder with all the detents, one of the, the kind of star pattern all the way around, the ribbed pattern, so they'll fit on just standard encoders, handy to have. We have 
some audio amplifiers. I went ahead and labeled the bag because I would forget what these are. There's a breakout of six of them uh, purchased from eBay. Nothing too fancy, just really handy uh, 2.5 to 5 volt and 3 watt amplifiers. And there's the part number at the top if you'd like to get some of your own. Something I've never had in the lab, but I have used many, many times in my professional career. We call these in the industry just feral crimps, but I suspect there's probably lots more names for them. These are for when you want to put a wire into a screwed terminal, a screw down terminal. It, the right way to do it is to have the proper shape of a crimp on there and then it won't uh, loosen off over time and you won't run into the issues of trying to terminate strands of wire that are getting out to the side. So you just crimp one of these on of the correct size and there are many in here. And there you go. And you just put it in, crimp it down. Handy dandy. Nice little organized case and it will be good for the uh, large robot project that still is underway. That that big uh, kids ride on toy conversion. I needed some connection so here you go. Servo horns. These are for RC aircraft. Uh, nothing to it. These are for an unbuilt Versa wing that I have. Uh, I don't have any. It comes with uh, if you buy it from flight test, they come with some wooden servo horns, but here's some nylon ones. Can't go wrong. I can also 3D print them, but uh, yeah, it's just easy. Batteries. These are one and a half volt uh, AG10 or LR1130s or a bunch of whole other names for them. These, uh, I believe, are the ones that fit my... Uh, locator light for locating lost, uh, lost models and I was running a little low or I thought I was so I grabbed a bunch more but now I think I have enough to last me till doomsday. Servo wire. This is just simple three conductor stranded wire that is joined together in a three conductor fan fashion most commonly used on RC aircraft and everything else that uses servos. These also are fantastic for using with robotics or Arduino projects when you have VREF, ground, and a signal. And uh, the only thing that's not so good is uh, it's not so easy to effectively twisted pair this. So sometimes you wanna, you can twist it and it will work, but uh, sometimes you wanna break the strands apart, but whole big long length of it, handy dandy to have. I was nearly out and I need to run some sensor wires on the robot project, so here we go. Next up, a propeller. Hmm, ominous. It's a very special propeller. It actually has threads inside and uh, it's for one particular model only. So I now have a spare for something you're gonna see in a minute. We got a smart fast charger. Now this is, uh, I forget the voltage ranges or is it labeled on it? Sure, underneath. It is just a 12 volt output, but it has some different functionality. It has some peak and hold, some trickle function. Uh, anti anti charging function. <laughs> Assume that's reverse polarity, anti voltage, over voltage, and yeah, blah 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 blah. But this, what I'm thinking, uh, because I'm going to be putting 12 volt lead acids in that big rover project, it has currently a 6 volt lead acid in it right now. So just for ease of use, I'm going to embed this on board and then I can just plug it into the wall and not have to fumble with external chargers and stuff to plug in the robot. I can just plug it in directly for recharge. I also got some interesting stuff from JLC PCB. This will be an entire project all its own, but I designed a quick and dirty PCB. Let's see if we can get it out. This I designed in Fritzing. Uh, it has not been tested whatsoever. I did not even do a proto board. I just whipped up the design, did the testing uh, with my eyeballs. So we'll, we'll see whether it actually works. But I had these fabbed and uh, they were actually sponsored by JLC PCB. So they'll get their own video and we'll give it a go and see how these work. But I can tell right now uh, that is a truly impressive board. I really like it. And next up is quite simply too big to show you here. So let's go out to the other room. This is a brand new aircraft. This is uh, the Nano Talon from ZOHD. We're going to be using this as a fun little autonomous drone. We'll go take a quick look at it and we'll round out the mailbag.
So out in the studio, this is how the Nano Talon arrived. Just wrapped in plastic, but inside the box, it's it's really a unique plane. It's kind of just stab together and go. So in theory, these items should all just plug into each other, but all the control systems should be contained in the main fuselage. And we just clip in, and these uh, drive rods control our control surfaces. Really neat, interesting design. It's EPO foam, so it's actually pretty tough. Tail feathers and a complete fuselage in theory. It should have all of our electronics with the exception of the speed control installed and we should be all set to go. Let me get into this. Just magnets. Ah, very cool. Very easy to get into. Comes with an extra clip for an HD camera outside. There is a flight stabilizer inside already. Uh, three servos, so we've got our aileron and looks like dual for the elevons. Yes, aileron, dual for the elevons at the back. So that should be really easy to set up in the radio. We're gonna scrap this flight control in favor of going with a full flight control, uh, the F4, and we're gonna run iNav on it. We're gonna install a GPS in this and this thing will be for all intents and purposes, uh, could be fully autonomous if we want it to be. The one drawback I see, it is a proprietary prop on these motors. We can change the motor out to something else, but everyone on, on YouTube and otherwise is reporting great results with this thing. It just flies great. And we can put whatever pack we want, but my idea is to stick with our 1300 uh, four cell lipos that we use on the quadcopters. That way, this thing is small enough, we can just chuck it on in a backpack more or less and use the same gear we use for our quadcopters, which makes it uh, a lot nicer for me anyway. It is a small model, so it's gonna be bumped around pretty good by wind, but hopefully the full stabilization will take care of that, but we'll see. Guys, good luck in all your builds this week. Let me know what you think of some of this stuff down below. Click a thumbs up down below. It really, really helps the channel. It really helps these videos. Check out my Patreon and join me in Discord, which is linked down below. I'd love to chat with you and uh, catch up. Cheers, guys.